Hello everyone, Lisa Stoutmeyer here to share nuggets of inspiration and empowerment for the advancement of the kingdom of God. We are continuing with our promises to the overcomer and this week's promise is coming from Revelations chapter 3 verse 5 and it reads, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now this promise was written to the church of Sardis, the fifth church that's mentioned in the book of Revelations, the uh, fifth out of seven churches. This church is known as the lifeless church or the spiritually dead church. This church had the right look this church had had built such a great name for themselves. They were known for doing the God thing. In other words, this church knew how to uh, move in the spotlight. This church knew how to bring in the crowd and draw in the crowd. This church even knew how to bring the people to tears. This church knew how to do the God thing. But when the spotlight was over, this church had no life. This church had no belief in the power of God. This church, in other words, had a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Kind of like... Um, endorsing a product that you don't that you don't believe in like I'll say for instance I don't eat pork but if Bob Evans called me for the right price to promote and be the face to announce the new uh, pork sausage that they're putting out like I said for the right price I might be inclined to say yes to Bob Evans knowing good and well I don't eat pork and when I'm done shooting a commercial um, that's all that I'll ever speak of of Bob Evans now I'm not down in Bob Evans those of you that eat pork and like Bob Evans to God be the glory for you but I'm just using that it as an example Oftentimes, a lot of times when people get in the spotlight and do the God thing, they do it as Bob Barker would say, if the price is right. So this was the lifeless church, the spiritually dead church. They knew how to handle the spotlight. But when the spotlight was over, it was a whole nother other story. So this church deep down, they were hopeless they had no hope for themselves they did all the things they went to every service they sang the song they preached they prophesied sounds like a little cycle that we've been going through week week after week after week but like i said when the spotlight is down nobody's watching mm, you wouldn't even know that they believed in god everything that they believed all that faith and all that word and all that power it was left on the other side of the door something that i can attest to all too well they ultimately wore the garments of the circumstances of life when they got out of the spotlight they put on the garment of guilt. They wore the garment of depression. They get around negative Nelly. Then they put around, put on the garment of negativity. They put on the garment of doubt when they hang out with unbelievers. They put on the garment of anger. They put everything on but the garment of praise when they got behind closed doors. But look at what God says in this letter written to this church is revelations 3 1 through 6 so go read that and mainly to verify that what i'm saying to you is true but look at what god says to this lifeless church he says be watchful or pay attention to when you start to develop these feelings that will cause you to give up or cause you to want to give up be watchful 
The reason why you need to be watchful is because the enemy is always looking for an opportunity to sliver his way in and each race still kill destroy is what the scripture says destroy everything that we believe about God and it all boils down to our faith system our belief system he says strengthen those things which remain in other words, if the spirit is telling you, if God is saying through his word to strengthen that which remains, in other words, you still have something left. You may have lost all your hope, but you might have a little bit of understanding. Like, you know he can do it, but you have no hope and belief that he'll do it for you. Well, just that little bit of understanding that you know he can do it, strengthen that. You may have lost your faith, but have a little bit of understanding. You knew about mama's God. You knew about grandma's God. You knew how God used to work it out for them. You had a little understanding. Strengthen that. You might have even lost your mind. <laughs> But you still got the sound of your voice, then you can open up your mouth and say, God is great, God is good. Strengthen that God is great, God is good. You might only be able to say, now I lay me down to, sh to sleep. Strengthen that. Strengthen that thing which remains. In other words, strengthen it, strengthen it. Because if you don't strengthen it, forget the other words. If you don't strengthen that little bitty thing that you have left, it's going to die too. And you are really going to end up in the dead situation. You really are not going to have the promised everlasting life if you don't strengthen that which remains. How can you strengthen it? I'm so glad you asked. Go back to the time. You can't physically go back in time, but mentally go back in time to the place where you first believed. The place where you were first introduced to Christ and couldn't anybody tell you nothing against the power of your God. You've seen miracles, signs, and wonders being demonstrated in your life, and you were just on fire. Go back to that time in your mind frame and pick that back up. Repent from these recent behaviors and these recent thoughts. I don't care if it was in the last day or in the last decade. It is not too late for you to turn things around. Repent, which means turn from your uh, way of thinking, your way of being, your way of living. Turn from that and go the other way and remember the things that God have done before. It is very, very, very important to remember how God worked on your, on your behalf. The words of our testimony will keep us strengthened and alive. It keeps the power of God at the forefront of our minds. That is the reason why we started talking about these uh, promises to the overcomer in depth, because we started out talking about overcomer status and how do we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. When you keep repeating the things that God has done for you, when you keep that in the forefront of your mind, that will feed your faith and keep your faith alive. And he may, and, and let's just say, for instance, you can't just really pull. You're not all one of them deep and wonderful people. You might not be able to pull uh, something uh, readily out of the hat that God has done for you. Think of somebody else's testimony. Think of a of what God has done for somebody else that they testified about. Because guess what? God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for them, he can and he will do it for you. The words of our testimony are, are, are so important in this day to remember here. It is, you have to be 
Because in this same Revelations chapter 3, it says, Jesus tells them, he says to the church, if you are not watchful, I am coming like a thief in the night. No man is going to know when I come. See, we're waiting for the second coming of Christ. And guess what? You don't want to be caught in a state of unbelief. It is your belief that is going to get you everlasting life. That's ever that's life now and life in the here in the hereafter for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever what shall believe in him will not perish so you have to get beyond just believing in the spotlight because God has great things in store for you great plans he has a great promise we don't want to be caught in that state of unbelief we want to please God in every single way, and we can't please God with our works per se. We'll be judged by our works. Yes, we have to find ourselves in obedience, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. My God, this is good to me. So look at the promise. Let us examine the promise. I will, he that overcomes, I shall uh, he, he shall be clothed in white raiment. That white raiment will take the place of those grave clothes you've been wearing. Will take the place of those. It will represent the, the whiteness of the garment. Will represent the purity of your washing by the water of the word. The purity of you become you being made whole by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. All those other garments that you've been dressed up in, God's going to replace those garments. And you won't even look like what you've been through. God will give you a new look, a new dress. And not only that, he says, I will not blot his name out of the book of life. I was reminded of the scripture in, in Luke chapter 10 when he sent the, the, the apostles out to cast out demons. And they came back all happy. Oh, master, the, the demons are subject to us. Jesus says, don't rejoice because of that. Don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Rejoice that your name will be written in the book of life. Not only with your name being written in the book of life, he will confess your name, our name. He will confess our name before the Father. And what an awesome thing to have our names professed to the Father because I can think of a couple of people on this earth that I kind of might think in my mind that if 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 so and so knew my name, if Oprah knew who I was, Oprah can put me on the map. And Oprah have put several people on the map and and thank God for whatever Oprah has done for other people. But your name being put before Oprah does not my name being put before Oprah does not uh, even compared to my name being put before the Father. Because guess what? When our name is put before the Father, he can put it on Oprah's heart. He can put it on LeBron James's heart. He can put it on anybody's heart to be a blessing in any type of way that he chooses. But most of all, most of all, what got me excited about this is my name being put on the Father. The Father will put my name on the enemy's heart and make my enemy my footstool. Only God can do that. What a, a, a thought. I'm just so fired up and I'm just so charged about that, that I am so ready for everything that God has for me in this day. So our name be put before the Father, put before the angels, because he has angels that are assigned to us each and every day that keep Jesus say don't you know I could call a legion of angels why could he call on them legion of angels because his name is before the angels like God has so many great things in store for us but we cannot afford we cannot afford to 
continue in our same thought patterns, we can no longer afford to limit the ability and the power of God. If I never get in the spotlight, if all I ever am are in the confines of my home, my prayer is that I will believe God and never doubt him to the fullest because when the scripture says that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask or think, now it's time for us to start asking for the biggest thing that we can ask and thinking the biggest thing that our minds can think of. And guess what the other part of that scripture says? It is according to the power that worketh in you. Now, if you are laying there lifeless, there's no power working in you. So it's time for you to get up from that spot. It's time for us to get up from that lifeless spot and tap into the power and, and, and exert that power in us so we can receive the promises of God.